Welcome back to the channel. I know everyone has forgotten about the Lerman arc in Clone Wars, but I haven't. The Separatists going into the Outer Rim and finding a pacifist village filled with monkey people to test a bioweapon on is way too dark for my childhood self to just forget about. Plus, I mean, it also gave us a lot of other really cool things, like these wolf dogs. They were cool, right? But also, more importantly, it gave us time to really get to see Lock Dirt. Yeah, this dude made me want to punch a rock. But also, the one and only, the amazing, uh, Tiwatka? No, that can't be right. I didn't like him either. In fact, if it weren't for some of the only Ala Sakura screen time we get, this wouldn't be as great of an arc as it is. Don't get me wrong, I love seeing the underdogs use ropes and sticks to beat the technologically advanced bad guys, but having Anakin on the brink of death alongside Rex, Ahsoka, and Ala Sakura made this fight one of the coolest, and I was just wondering what details I missed watching it years ago for the first time, I think it's time to go through it again and see what all we missed. If you enjoy the video, detonate your own personal bioweapon on the subscribe button and join the community of happy lemurs here on the channel. I'm doing research on a big clone video right now that you're not going to want to miss, so make sure you're subscribed. Now let's just jump right into this video. Jeez, this is crazy. So they're in this system and they had three ships and two are already going down. Ala Secures is the last one. Also, this, the super droids, looks so cool. Yeah, I don't know why we didn't see more of these in Clone Wars. It's like the scuba troopers. They're such a cool clone unit, but we only see them that once. I mean, just look at it. They're like bumblebees just coming out of the hive. Also, this is such a cool shot. Seeing it burn and enter the atmosphere, kind of like episode three when Obi-Wan and Anakin had to land it. Master, are you sure that's the wisest thing? This is so cool. In season one, Anakin had a habit of just jumping while he was like in midair onto random stab troopers like the Battle of Teth or onto these things. It was really cool. Kind of kept the same vibe from episode two when he kind of jumped out of Obi-Wan's ship in Coruscant. Okay, this bombardment is kind of equal to what we saw in Ahsoka when Thrawn was shooting down on the good guys in the finale. But I mean, here, they literally take out an entire cruiser. In Thrawn, they miss every single shot. The good guys just go right down the middle. They didn't even evade. They just went in a straight line. Where's the consequences? My sentence, Skywalker. Bly is so cool. It's so sad how their relationship ended. I wish we got to see more of them in Clone Wars. This is so cool. I thought it was crazy they did something this drastic to Anakin only one season into Clone Wars. I was like, did they just kill him? Sokka, we have to leave now. Poor Anakin, they're just dragging his lifeless body around. And I know Ayla was just saying hurry up, but still. The hyperdrive's been activated. Shut it down. I can't. General Sakura, what's going on? We're going into hyperspace. Detach, detach. They'll take us with them. It's pretty cool they established if the small ship that's docked with the big ship goes into hyperdrive, it'll try to take the big ship with the little ship. That's crazy, because I don't think it would make a successful hyperspace jump. I think it would kind of rip the ships apart. I mean, we've never seen that happen besides Last Jedi, and I mean, that's with a grain of salt. General Sakura, we have a problem. What is it, Commander? Well, we're headed right for a star. And I really like that this just goes from one problem to the next. It goes from, well, Ala Secure is almost dying. Oops, Anakin's almost dying. Okay, we're jumping into hyperspace. Oops, now we're headed towards a sun. Oh my gosh, this says impact. The navigation computer's completely fried. Shut down all power circuits to reset the coordinates. That will cut off Anakin's life support. I don't like it any more than you do, but it's a risk we're going to have to take. Ooh, what does that say? That's a lot. Stand by for prognosis? What is that? Prognosis is the likely course of a disease or ailment. Okay, so it's like checking him out to see if he's gonna die or not. Got it. Just a weird word to use. This is insane. I just remember this happening right here and wondering why she didn't use the force sooner. But I mean, she does it pretty immediate. Still, that's a crazy problem to go to. Now we're done uh, almost crashing into the star. Now we're going to crash into the planet. Perfect. Jeez, that is such a hard hit. The only reason they're surviving that is because it's such a big ship. And even still, it's questionable. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Pulls them out and then immediately explodes. 
I love how survival based this arc is. I love that they just crash land on a new planet, new species, they have to go find them, and Anakin's almost dead. Like, even that alone is crazy. The new beast, Captain Rex protecting him, there's so many cool parts to this arc. Did anyone else like it as much as me, or does everyone kind of think it's one of the weaker arcs? I mean, it was season one, it's not the deepest arc, but I liked watching it. Behind you! Yeah, these eagle wolf things are crazy. I'm surprised we didn't see these anywhere else in Star Wars. These are massive. They're the size of what, a rhinoceros? I mean, those talons are huge. This is closer to a dinosaur than anything we have. This one clone backs up. He gets so scared he just falls back and sits down. No way. Did you see this? Okay, so after this thing throws this guy off, right? He attacks and bites this guy's helmet. Check this out, immediately for the head. That's crazy. Let's cut away just at the last second because this is a kids TV show. And here's another one going for the throat. Jeez. Maybe this is why I didn't forget this arc. Not the bioweapon trauma on an innocent village. It's not even gonna hit us. But the clone troopers getting their heads ripped off by eagle dogs the size of rhinos. That bullseye was so clean. I mean, they're definitely dead by now. Their throats have been ripped out, but still. Oof. That was like the Rishi eel shot. That was good. Okay. Just out of context, it looks like they're just cuddling to keep warm. The little egg village. Nice. Hot central. We made it. These people are so weird. Like, they fit into a Star Wars TV kid show, but... It would be hard to imagine them in a live action Star Wars film, especially with the Irish accents. Violence breeds violence. Jedi are no peacekeepers. The Elder is so annoying. Like, I get there's pacifists and, you know, people who just want peace, but still, it's really frustrating how far he goes in his ways before his village almost gets wiped out and burned to the ground. Also, their little roly-poly mode of transport, this is so cool. They just go into a ball and roll. They're like little droidicas. Master, destroy us! Poor Rex, all alone, about to get eaten. Only if Rex had taken Anakin's saber to defend themselves, could you imagine? I mean, he's already almost dead. Like, he'd have to be in such bad shape for him to literally hand his saber to Rex. Good shot. Oof, what happened? Anakin dove out of the way and Rex got shoulder checked out of the way. This guy has the most punchable face in all of Star Wars. Maybe not in all of Star Wars, but he's up there. Rush Clovis is up there too, but he is one of the most punchable. Are you not concerned about the Jedi at all? This little butterfly thing is so cool. I forgot about this. They have a little butterfly that they can send as like a carrier pigeon for communication. I call it no courage. So what was Ahsoka just eating? Is this a cheese stick? What is that? It just looks like chalk. Do you think she's just eating sidewalk chalk? It's probably like rash, but I am curious what all they get up to eating in Star Wars because sometimes she's eating squares and other times it's circles and other times it's just cylinders. For how big the Star Wars universe is, they don't have a lot of great looking food in Clone Wars. Oh yeah! We know they have- All right, let's see what this says. Oh, it says range, okay. That's exciting. Okay, that move that Sakura did to put her lightsaber away after this was so clean. Check this out, a slice. Look at this flurry, one, two, away. I was playing with lightsabers the other day and I noticed that I kind of do that sometimes, but the opposite direction. She lets go of the lightsaber and it flips 180 in the air while it's just kind of sitting on her hand. She basically flips it upside down, deignites it, and then puts it straight on her belt. That was so clean. I gotta learn how to do that. It's so crazy that they made the exact weapon, but the opposite that the Republic was testing in the Zillow Beast arc on Malastare. I don't know if you remember, but they made a bomb that only affected technology. Basically a big EMP that also had a huge shockwave effect. So in theory, they could put it in the middle of a battlefield and it would disable all the droids, but all the clones would be okay. So the Separatists developed their own device, but the opposite. It wouldn't affect any technology. It would only affect living life forms. So they could do the same thing. It would kill all the clones and it would didn't kill any of their droids. Not that the droids aren't expendable, but still, it's pretty cool they developed the same thing, but opposite. Leave machine 
is unharmed. It's kind of wholesome that Lockturd made this weapon that only affects organic matter because it kind of shows that he cares about the battle droids. Like, the only benefit of this is the battle droid survive. Like, when have any Separatists ever cared about the battle droid surviving? I don't know, it's kind of nice. I never saw it like that before. Look how happy they are. They were so happy. Even Count Dooku is like, I hope it is worth the expense. As in, it's expensive to do the research and make these. Does Dooku care about the droids as well? Maybe it's about saving the machines so they're not just dropping normal bombs on the battlefield and destroying all their machinery as well. This is crazy. I was so worried for Bly. I forgot that he makes it to episode three, but you know what? Good job Ayla Secure was there. Oh, they ripped the heads off the battle droids. Okay, I think this is Rex. I don't know what Bly does. Bly, it just looks like he, I don't know, throws the battle droid on the ground. Rex grabs it by the neck, puts his foot up, and kicks his body off of his head. That was pretty sick. Check the exterior. Cannot have any surprises for the general. 4724. How does the West End check? Rex is literally just beating them down. That is so cool. Poor droids, didn't even see it coming. When Count Dooku sees how successful my weapon is against civilian targets... I Whoa! So, Lock Durd's motivation for building this weapon wasn't to save battle droids, it wasn't to kill clones, it was to use against civilians! It is weird that these civilians that he chose look like their houses are made of organic matter so those two will be burned because the only reason I can think of for using this bomb where it burns organic matter but not machines versus just a normal bomb is to drop on a village so you can clear out all the inhabitants but the village itself still stays there. Unless the village is also made of organic material, then the entire village is gone. Why not just drop a bomb? The battle droid's like, okay, thanks a lot. I guess nope. you don't care about us. How are the shields? This is so cool. Same shields as Battle of Naboo with the Gungans. This is so awesome. Do they have a spear? Oh, that's a rake. Never mind. Much more effective than a spear. Squad one. Also, I love that his weapon doesn't work because of the shield, and he's like, Ugh, let's just start a war. Instantly engages a squad of battle droids. This is so cool. Oh my gosh. This was like the Avengers Assemble moment in Clone Wars. <laughs> Did you see that droid try to turn and run? Look at this. Ahsoka jumps up into the air. The droid sees her deflect it. And he actually turns and tries to get away. So much for program for violence. Her fighting style is so cool. Sir, the first squad has been destroyed. Squad two and three, attack! Oh, good shot. Who gets the headshot there, Rex or Bly? Who do you think got that? Oh, wait, what? Does nobody hit the droid? The literal, the droid in front who gets his head popped off? What? How does nobody hit that? Did he have a malfunction? Did they forget to put the blaster hit on? Oh, he slipped. Maybe he slipped on something. Or he gave up. Oh, okay, so his head didn't come off. It was his gun. He threw his gun. He just jumped backward. We have to retreat! This is so cool. Okay, I didn't realize how close they were, but it would have been cool if they just started the fight like this. Maybe it would be hard to see through the ripples. Just the guns poking out, you know, so you're still protected. Also, do you notice the droids feel affected? Or they, they look like they feel affected when they walk through the ray? They kind of like step through it with their shoulders first. I wonder if it's hard to pass through a shield like that. Oh my gosh, Ahsoka pulled a Yoda. Back in the first episode, Yoda would jump on top of droid heads and stab them. And Ahsoka did that right there. Very cool. I still feel like it has to be the most fun thing ever to be a Jedi and just run through a squadron of battle droids. Like no chance, slice through them like butter, and they're just so thin they just crumble. It just has to be so satisfying when they fall. It's like Lego pieces. <laughs> Also, I did not realize that the way that the binoculars were shaped with the slits on the sides were so the battle droids could put them right up to the curved edges of their face. Do you see that? Yeah, this design. It was made for them? That makes sense. I've wondered about that. We're going to help. Yes, I love this. The monkey people stand up for themselves and roll into battle with their sticks, forks, rakes, and rope. 
What does this one do? This one gets caught off guard immediately. Allurement. Oh, Allurement <gasps> swipes his ankle up. That is so cool. And another one jumps up and takes him down from the head. Oh, he's got a stick. He whacks him down. That's cool. The old one too. One rolls up and hits his knee out from under him. And the other one jumps up and just smacks him down into the ground. That was way cooler. I've always watched this one kind of rope up this guy's ankles, but this was way cooler. And then they're just beating on him with their, what is that, a sickle? Okay, so this whole thing here, the reason we never see this weapon again is because they destroy it here and they stop it while it's in its testing phase. But why don't the Separatists just make another one? I mean, I feel like they know it works. They've done preliminary tests on the battle droids. I feel like they just would have recreated it and done a test somewhere else. And then if that was successful, they would implement it in battles elsewhere. Anakin just destroyed their prototype. He didn't prove it didn't work. It shouldn't have stopped the Separatists from using this weapon again. This is cool. Knock them down and then cut them up. But I mean, if there was any more squadrons, if they didn't take out the first squad, I mean, they would have just been massacred. They were no chance. The Ewoks were more effective than the Lerman. Yeah, Ewoks were warriors. They could protect themselves. Lerman, this was their first time. But this was pretty bare minimum on the fighting. Good effort, though. And there goes Lock Dirt. We never see him again. I wonder if these guys ever try to learn how to rewire the battle droids and program them. I mean, they're so primitive. I don't know if they could, but it would be really cool to revisit them and see that they did a Jabo Hood kind of thing where they fixed them all up and repurposed them. Because I think the son, the main character, he could probably evolve into that. Maybe. I don't know. They don't have access to much. This, okay, I don't know if you watched the Battle of Naboo in slow motion. There was a lot of cool hand-to-hand -hand combat melee moments. If this episode was any longer, we ever revisit it, it would have been way cooler to see a lot more of the hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Lerman swiping the droids' ankles out from under them and smashing them into the ground. The melee combat with the droids is so cool. I would love for them to just lean into that more, especially with random creatures besides clones and Jedis. Overall, I really like this arc. What did you guys think about it? Tell me in the comments and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video. I will see you guys soon and until then, may the force be with you always.